Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, where we will talk about some effective marketing practices that you can use for your under 65 business. My name is Chelsea Smith. I am the Learning and Development Specialist here at Action Benefits. Um, and like I said, we're going to talk over some marketing practices that you can use in your individual under 65 um, business. So I, um, we've hosted enough of these where I don't think I need to go over anything other than just, hey, sit back, relax, enjoy the show. And if you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat or the Q&A feature to answer those questions or to ask those questions and I will answer them as soon as I can. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here today. So by the end of today's course, hopefully you should be able to describe a sample insurance customer's buying journey. So what kind of goes through the mind of one of your clients when they are looking to purchase some health insurance from you? Um, how to identify various outreach methods to support customers throughout their buying journey? And how to identify tiers of the health insurance marketplace circle of champions recognition program? So Judging by these outcomes, you should gather that this is like an overarching um, marketing uh, webinar today. I'm not going to go too much into specifics. If you're interested in specifics, um, how to do certain things, um, we have a ton of resources available for you on YouTube of previous web webinars that we've recorded that you can watch to kind of learn maybe how to handle some negative reviews, how to uh, increase your presence online, how to create ads that work on Meta. We have a bunch of diff different options for you. So if you're interested in those individual nitty gritty details, um, we do have a Meta ads one coming up in November as well. If you're interested in that with Randy, check that out. But just keep in mind, this is overarching. I'll answer any questions you have about nitty gritty details, but this is meant to be a little more overarching. So as we think about the variety of marketing strategies that we have available to us as health insurance agents, it's important to kind of put them into context as to where they fit into the beginning to end process that a client will go through when they're trying to purchase health insurance. Um, every customer is going to be a little different, but there is a common used model, a 101 type model that we can look at. Um, that outlines in general what happens when someone goes to make a purchase, basically of anything, not just health insurance. So if you're someone selling other things, maybe you do uh, cookies on the side, which in that case, let me know so I can get some awesome cookies from you. But in general, when someone is purchasing anything, um, this is the journey that they're going to go through. So the first, if I'm, um, I'll use examples. Um, if someone it, uh, purchased health insurance and kind of never um, talk to an agent of what those examples of those uh, stages kind of look like. So the first stage is the awareness stage. And this is where a consumer realizes that they need something, that they need to purchase something to solve a problem for themselves. Um, in the insurance world, it would look something like, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of myself. I started this new business. Um, it's really going great. And then they were like, wait, 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 wait a second. Um, I don't, I don't have any health insurance. Crap. Yeah, I gotta buy something, right? Um, and then consideration would be where the where that same person would start to evaluate products, maybe look at some reviews, um, surf the marketplace, maybe go on some carrier websites, um, talk to people about it. Hopefully, this is where they find an agent um, to help them pick out what is right for them. And then the next is the purchasing stage, where as you might guess. This is where a consumer is going to then enroll in coverage or hit that buy now button on Amazon or head to the mattress store, whatever it is. Um, onboarding, this is where they first use and experience the product. Um, so this would be where they get emails from you or from the carrier um, to start understanding their product. And then advocacy is the final stage. And this is where clients shout, hopefully, the good word about your product from the rooftop. And if you weren't there to get that done for them, or if that did not happen, then they're, you're going to get some crickets, right? So this is, we want to capture them before that point so we can reap the benefits of the advocacy stage, right? Because if they're just doing health, if they just did it themselves, well, they're just going to advocate for themselves. 
So in the insurance context, we can um, represent these steps with a couple of key questions. We can talk about what coverage is available to me, who can offer the coverage that meets my needs, how do I purchase coverage, how do I use that coverage, how do I keep this coverage, or how do I change coverage if I don't like it, um, and where, where can I add to this coverage to even better meet my needs if necessary. So like we said, every customer is different. There is not going to be one person that fits every single one of these boxes, right? Um, I don't know if you ever heard the story about the fighter pilot thing where they made the average plane cockpit for the uh, pilot and then nobody actually fit that average. There's no one average person. And it's the same thing for purchasing stuff, right? Everyone goes through their own journey. Um, you know, some people might not consider anything just buy the first thing they see if it's something cheap or something easy, um, or they might take years to find the right thing, right? But everyone is different, but this is in general what they're going to experience when they're trying to purchase something. So then we need to examine as the agents where we fit in each one of these parts, right? We're going to kind of tackle the assignments a little differently depending on where we enter in in this portion of the journey for that client, right? So at the awareness stage, we have two goals, right? So when we first, when the customer first is aware that they need something, we're gonna have two goals here. We might see raising awareness of our agency and the lines of business that we support as like our secondary goal here. So we're going to, we obviously that is something we wanna do, but at the end of the day, we have a primary goal here of, of kind of collecting that person and getting them in our clutches and getting them interested in what we have to sell and getting their attention and heading them into the consideration phase, phase, right? So at that consideration stage, we can assist consumers by more precisely determining what they need, um, providing quotes, um, helping them compare the products, stuff like that. So this is probably where, as a health insurance agent, this is probably the most of where you think of what you um you participate in this portion. We participate in all of them, but this probably is the first of mine to anybody um, for a health insurance agent as to what, where you would participate at this point. Um, it's also a great place to think about cross-selling, um, which we'll talk about a little later on. Then at the purchasing phase, this is where we can assist customers in the enrollment process and then find any um, hiccups that they might have in the enrollment and help them out with that. And then during onboarding, we support customers as they become acquainted with their carrier, maybe help them out if they have any other questions or problems there, making sure they're getting their cards, making sure that they understand how to use the coverage, where stuff like that, and being just around to answer any questions they might have. And then finally, we help them ensure that clients become advocates for both the carrier and our agency when we assist them by maintenance changing, um, providing claim support, answering their questions still, maybe a month later they have a question, or making sure that year over year they're still enjoying their product. And um, if they want to make a switch, then we can start the cycle over again and go back to that consideration phase um, and pick them out a product that works for them. Uh, keeping in that advocacy stage as well, it kind of, I think it kind of bleeds into that awareness portion as well, because once you are creating them as an advocate for your business, you're going to want to continue to make sure that they're top of mind, right, for their your health and their health insurance. So when someone asks them about their coverage, they don't think, oh, go talk to the carrier or, oh, go talk to my buddy. No, oh, go talk to me. Come talk to the, me as the health insurance agent. Make sure that you are the thing that's on top of mind there, not necessarily just the carrier. So there's a lot of things to think about in all, all of these portions of um, the consumer journey here. And then throughout, I'm just going to put them all up here. So throughout each step of the journey, we have multiple points that we can help with, um, opportunities for us to support. And we just talked about what, um, where we go and when we support these things, but we also probably want to think of some examples of how we can do those things effectively, right? What types are of, um, contact are appropriate for each step of the journey, right? Because if you're um, calling during the awareness stage, that's a little, I don't know if that's going to work, right? They're, they're not 
ready to talk to someone yet. So if you're calling them at that point, that might not be the best way to go. But having a you know an ad out there would bring them into you, right? And then same thing with the the purchasing process. If you're sitting in there saying, "All right, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to purchase my product," and you mail them a uh, you know ad for your agency, that's not doing what they need. So it's it's kind of not helping them. So they're gonna be like, "What is he, what are they doing?" Uh, I'm gonna go with a different agent. They don't get what I'm trying to say, right? So it's very important to make sure that you're. Um, action fits within the, the portion of the journey that you're trying to use. Otherwise you're going, they're going to go with someone else. So for the purposes of this segment, I'm just going to focus on some of the things that I feel are going to get you the most bang for your buck when it comes to effort versus um, payout for that um, portion of the journey for that customer. So in the awareness stage, um, like I said, because our, um, point here is to raise some awareness and collect some leads. We're going to try to go through, cast a big net, like do something that um, applies to many, right? And I think this is kind of an obvious one. Um, you just kind of want to put out um, print digital, print and digital ads. And if you are a seasoned and established agent, um, you're going to have that word of mouth um, advertisement for yourself as well. But if you're a newer agent, um, you're going to want to particularly focus on that print and digital media aspect, um, using those um, ads that are uh, provided for you, those draft ads from your carrier, or making stuff on your own, depending on how detailed you want that ad to be. And then the consideration phase is kind of similar, but this is where you can start getting a little more into contacting and personalizing what's happening here, right? Because now you have the client in front of you, they're, you already know they're interested in what they need. Now it's time to kind of narrow that down to what exactly that client wants, right? Um, sending emails, making phone calls, making appointments, filling out scope. Um, I'm sorry, that's Medicare. Filling out consent forms, that kind of thing. Finding a solution. Uh, maybe you're doing Zoom with your clients. Um, some I've heard some agents go to homes. Some agents, you know, uh, meet up places. Whatever it is that works for you. Have them come to your office to get them started. So really quick, we talked about a bunch of places and times and spots where you can have contact with a prospect or a client to keep them in front of mind, um, to have them keep you in front of mind, I should say. So um, if you could either say it directly to me in the chat, um, there's a way to toggle that on if you're like, don't want to give away your secret sauce to the other agents in the a webinar today, you can toggle it to just me. Um, but if you could, while I take a quick break to take a sip of water, tell me what phase of the customer journey do you excel at meeting prospects and clients at and why? And I will be right back. Okay, so someone said to me that they think that they really um, excel the most in the word of mouth portion. So this agent must be someone who kind of has a little more seasoning to them. Um, they have the ability to exercise that word of mouth um, coverage for themselves, right? They can they can just feed themselves with their own success, right? Um, most agents I talk to, that's their answer, right? That they say word of mouth is the best. Um, and that shows volumes to me as to how well that agent works, right? That proves to me that they're doing a great job. Um, but if you're newer to the health insurance world, it will be a little more difficult to get those word of mouth um, referrals. Just really hammer home how important they are to those who are showing up, who you are gathering through that print media, who might be showing up to your um, office, walking in, whatever. Just really make sure that you are explaining to them the value of that word of mouth if that if you're a newer agent because at the end of the day I think that still is the most valuable way um but I can't just tell you that and move on because then that's not how can you help yourself out in other ways right so that's something to keep in mind I think all right um I didn't see any questions in the chat let me double check before we keep going nope all right so reaching prospects. So how to raise awareness for your business. So there's a bunch of different ways you can acquire leads. Um, 
it just depends on how you want to go about it. We always encourage you to seek high quality leads rather than a quantity of leads. And there's vendors out there you can purchase leads from, but the clients on the other side of that data don't yet have a relationship with you. Um, a positive experience submitting their information, whether that experience takes place at a marketing event in front of you, uh, from a postcard, from your website, um, that's even that little bit builds so much more towards building their relationship and keeping that client and prospect right in front of you in comparison to just like getting a name off of a list. Um, Because oftentimes those lists, as we probably already know, are built off of someone like clicking on a link or um, calling a number, and then you just kind of get that lead from there. And while it's something, um, it's nowhere near as warm as someone who comes to your website, fills out a form, and says, hi, I'm I'm interested. I'd like to um, explore your products more with you. So um, if you do choose to use a lead vendor, make sure that you're locating the types of leads that work for you. Um, and make sure that you are responding to those people quickly because those leads are the most um, cool, right? So like 30, according to the Brevet group, about 30 to 50% of sales go to the vendor that responds first and responds most often to them. So you're going to want to, if you're using those leads, respond quickly and um, often. Even an automated email is something, it's not the best. You're gonna still want to talk to them as soon as you can but an automated email at least shows them, hey, like I, you're in front of mind of me, I will get to you as soon as I can in comparison to just nothing. Um, it's also helpful to remember that 80% of sales require five follow-ups according to the marketing donut. And that means that it's helpful to map out ahead of time what you're going to do with that client to make sure you hit those five follow-up contacts, right? So even if they don't need five follow-ups, you, again, for that front of mind thing, you're going to want to continue to make sure you're talking to that client and getting them the attention that they feel that they deserve so that you, they will word of mouth talk great about your business after everything is said and done. So there are three strategies that we like to um, talk about to bring attention to your business. There is print media strategies, word of mouth strategies, and digital media strategies. Um, and like I said, this is an overarching uh, webinar today, so I'm not going to go into too much of the details of how to get these done, but we do have other webinars that go deeper into um, this print media and digital media ones. We don't have one that really talks about um, specifically word of mouth, but at the end of the day, um, all of these things then eventually lead to word of mouth um, awareness strategies at the, once they have fulfilled their print media or digital media purpose when they kind of fall into a word of mouth thing. So and really all of them are word of mouth, I guess. Um, so we'll talk about these three kind of like overarchingly. It's likely that the carriers you work with will provide a number of resources for you. I kind of mentioned that earlier. Um, Humana, I know, and UHC for sure, I can think of off the t just off the top of my head, um, include uh, customizable business cards, flyers, uh, print and social media as I've used them myself. Um, very easy to use to upload like your logo or your information and it'll create the ads for you. Um, that's kind of what we tend to recommend that agents do, especially if you work with Medicare in any stretch of the imagination. It's always better to just go with something that you know is CMS approved so you don't have to deal with any headaches or mess later. Um, but if you're doing strictly under 65, it's a little less stringent. So you might be able to get away with doing a little more creative work on your end to create some of these print media or digital media. Um, we call them creatives, like flyers, stuff, stuff like that. So just if you're going to make your own, just make sure that you are... Um, following the carrier's rules. Don't be putting the um, logo of the carrier on to that uh, uh, media without getting the permission of the carrier. And then make sure that you are appropriately representing your relationships with the carriers or with your clients um, effectively. Uh, any sort of like being deceptive 
It's not going to get you anywhere. So then what do I do with these print media things after I make them? Well, there's a bunch of things you can do with them, really. Um, I would put them in um, community hubs. You could put them in places like pharmacies, libraries, hardware stores, restaurants, gyms. Uh, I've also seen agents have success with having putting them into um, welcome kits in like a neighborhood or an HOA. Um, you can mail them. Uh, I've there are a couple vendors that we've worked with, and we know of that you can uh, pay to have them mail the stuff out for you. Um, for less than a quarter per piece, everyday direct mail from the United States Postal Service is a really good option. Um, they can have your mailers delivered out for you um, to routes that you choose yourself. Um, Randy does a great webinar on U.S. Census data that's recorded and available on our YouTube channel. If you're interested in figuring out how to, like, who to mail mailers to, that's a great option. Um, they sometimes can be a little less cost effective, but if you can target it appropriately, great option. You can also contact a marketing agency if that's something you're interested in. But, and you also have Randy and I you can ask anything about it too. So word of mouth referrals are, like we've said before, probably the strongest out of all three of these types that we're going to talk about. Um, and they can be the most helpful, but that requires that you have previous relationships with clients in the first place to have that word of mouth be generated, right? So I don't want to talk a ton about it because like like I said, there's it's not going to apply to every agent, but I don't want to ignore it either. Um, so a lot of the, and a lot of the ways you get word of mouth business just bleeds into other um, types of media or types of uh ways to get clients, right? So overall, it's just great customer service, right? Serving your customers, making sure that they feel heard, making sure they feel like you are are on their side and you're not just there to make a paycheck, right? It's important to ask too, right? Again, they're not thinking about your business. They're not, their goal is not to make your business better. They like you, I'm sure, and they're glad that you're their agent, but they're not thinking about how to make your business better. They're there to just get their um, get their coverage and then move on with their life, right? So just reminding them, hey, you know, my business is so much better when when you're referred for some um, from someone else. Let if you have any friends or family who need healthcare, let me know. Um, and I, I'm sure you already do that, but sometimes it might just slip your mind. Um, make sure you're thanking them. Um, you can do this with a reward or a gift. Um, or you can just send them an, a, a nice email that thanks them or mail them something. For um, I know, for example, with my auto insurance agent, um, she, before I started working here, she used to mail me lottery tickets every time I gave her a referral from one of my friends. And of course, it only happened once, but like, man, was I super interested in making sure that I um, got her a, uh, a referral after that because I wanted to get more more lottery tickets from her. It was really cute, actually. So I'll never forget that. And now whenever I have an auto insurance thing, I would go to her. Um, recognizing your customers. Some customers would enjoy this. Some might be a little less apt to enjoy this. But reposting on social media, um, talking about their um, successes they had with you. And you could even do them anonymously, um, posting them on your social media accounts or post, even posting them up in your office, putting them on your um flyers, stuff like that, just um, those testimonials of great service that you give and then recognizing them, giving them kudos for giving you that. And then reminding people every once in a while when it makes sense for you to contact that client. Anytime you're in contact with them, remind them like, hey, you know, um, I'm still here, right? I know my um, the guy who does my leases for my car Every year for my birthday sends me a little postcard saying, hey, you know, Rip, can't wait to see you again when you lease again. And that keeps me at the top of mind, keeps um, him at the top of mind for me as well, right? And now we have digital media. So what to consider when you are trading those digital things for your clients to see on the internet or potential prospects. 
So pairing that discussion on word of mouth marketing with this, um, Google and Yelp and other platforms have a potential to reach even more people. Um, when we have opportunities to encourage clients to leave reviews, um, encourage them to do that on a digital platform. Um, if you don't have a Google business account already, I highly recommend you get one. Um, that's where you can uh, have your clients leave reviews that are seen by anybody who Googles your business, right? And on top of that, it's really important that I feel that I feel like that you controlling the narrative of what your of your business is important. And having that Google profile means that you are in control of whatever pops up first when your business is Googled. So when you Google like, you know, Chelsea's health insurance agency, that's the name of my agency. Um, if I own that Google business profile, then I get to control what comes up first. And I get to put, post things about my business. I get to answer the questions about my business. I get to be in control of what people see, which then I can better have a grip on who is seeing my business and how I'm getting those um, people to come to me, right? So that being said, the flip side of it is the only thing worse than having a um, having no digital media presence at all is having one that's stale. So again, you're in control of that um, business profile page. So make sure that you're keeping it updated once you do have it. So putting posts um, on there, answering those reviews. Um, we have a digital marketing uh, webinar that goes into a ton of great examples of what you could put up there to make sure that your uh, page is staying fresh and making sure it stays human humanized, right? Like put yourself out there. Um, and there's also one on how to deal with negative reviews and you get some negative reviews up there too. So lots of different options that go a little more in depth. Just whatever you are drawn to within this overarching idea, just run with it. Um, and then think about how you can repurpose your content that you do post on Google or on those flyers or in those, um, in your office, how you can put those across multiple platforms, right? So if you're writing an educational blog on your website about SEPs, you could then take quotes from that and make them into little Facebook posts. You could make a short video of you yourself talking about those. You could um, have an educational webinar about SEPs that um, could draw in someone who is just getting a life event. You could write a quick email reminding people like, oh, hey, you know, if it's your birthday, or if you're whatever, have you considered your changing your health insurance? So consider also how those things play together as well. Um, I talk about this a ton in my other digital marketing uh, webinars, but at the end of the day, your goal is to get them back to a place where they can contact you, right? So a Facebook post, yes, that is great for your agency and it's great for the awareness portion. But if there's no way for them to get a hold of you, all you're doing is building awareness, right? You're not giving them an opportunity to become a prospect for you, right? You're not warming that lead up further. So make sure that you're either giving them a way to contact you in that post, in that flyer, in that review, or funneling them back to your website or to your business page so that they can get a better feel of who you are and find a way to contact you, right? Because at the end of the day, that's the only way that you're going to get them as an actual prospect. So some other things to note before we move on to the next portion of our show. Um, as someone who's been doing this for a few years, I will tell you that all of these things do not accumulate to success overnight. You cannot post one thing one time and go, job well done. It takes a little bit every day. Um, I, every single day I'm at work and posting on multiple social media accounts and not every day does anyone, does everyone interact with those posts? There's some posts that go, nobody looks, looks at them, right? And that's okay. That's not a failure. Um, that is just, that post wasn't as interesting to some people. And then that one post will come up and hundreds of people interact with it and it's great. Um, and that's not the best, you know, that's not like, oh, that's the most successful post. I'm just going to repost that post every single day. For, don't do that either. That's, you have to realize that marketing is something that's going to ebb and flow. And it's not always going to be a direct formula to success. 
Um, and if you um, fail one time and if the, your first post doesn't get thousands of likes, that's totally okay. That's, it's probably, it, I'm almost going to guarantee you that that's what's going to happen. That your first couple of posts, nobody is going to like it or no one's going to call you. It takes some time. Um, and if you really feel like you're not getting um, the traction that you want, um, let Randy or myself know and we can try to look at what we can do to help you and give you some pointers and some tips. You can also consider doing some cable TV stuff, radio stuff as well. They will, um, you can purchase radio time. Um, I've even looked at purchasing like boards on um, baseball diamonds and hockey ranks and that kind of stuff. So always get creative at places and communities that people might be interested in purchasing health insurance that don't really realize that they are yet. Okay, so I talked a lot. So I'm going to give you a second to kind of mull what I said over while I take a sip of water. Um, if you could be so kind as to put into the chat for me, what strategies you currently use to promote your brand and what are some that you would like to try? Ooh, I like that one. Okay. Someone put in um, that Priority Health has a um, thing going on right now where they will email prospects for you. Um, I don't want to talk a ton about this one because I'm not, I saw the email for it the other day. Um, I'm not going to, but I don't remember everything about it. So if anyone in the chat remembers or saw this, um, let me know. But I already put out something a couple days ago about how they would give like a $10 gift card or something out to emailing out to prospects. If you've, still have, if you've seen that and you remember what I'm talking about, let me know. Um, and I can talk more about it. But I did see that the other day. Um, so that is another great option for kind of rewarding your clients um, and getting them to talk more about your um, business for you. Another one I think about a lot is Nextdoor. Um, I know when I was looking for a like a plumber to snake my house drains, I looked for someone on Nextdoor because I wanted to see the reviews of people in my neighborhood and thoughts of the people in my neighborhood to know if that person was a good fit for me and what I was looking for. And I've seen some health insurance agents get success there as as well. So that's a great option too, if you are looking for other platforms um, outside of, you know, the typical Facebook, um, Instagram, that kind of thing. Okay. So now how do I reach my prospects and help them in the consideration process? Uh, a lot of this, like we said before, this is what you think of when you think of you know, the time that you spend with your clients, this is probably the time that you think of that comes to mind first. Um, we here at Action think it's really important to focus on education for success. Um, I mean, that's kind of the reason why we have a big old team of people who help you do things and kind of show you the best way to do them after you have that question. Um, that's why Randy and I are here to help teach you as well. So maybe we're a little biased, but I think education, I personally as well think education is the strongest factor in most of this, but particularly so in the um, <clears throat> consideration phase, right? So according to a report from the Kaiser Family Foundation, which I'm sure you're familiar with, about 20% of marketplace consumers seek help from someone they don't know to help them find the right coverage. I think that number is even a little low. I bet it's higher than that. Um, and you want to be that person, right? You don't want it to be like, I don't know, their uncle or something. You want it to be you, the agent, right? So in that same report, 61% of marketplace enrollees had difficulty doing most of the things that they need to do to get health insurance, whether that be defining a plan that, that fits what they need, comparing the cost, comparing network, all that. They basically find it hard to do all of those things. And I don't blame them, right? Um, before I worked in health insurance, I would have saw all of that as difficult. And I would just not have, I would have just had somebody help me. Um, there is a market for people who want that assistance, but 40% of them aren't necessarily thinking that they should reach out to an agent and say, you know, looking back when, when before I worked in health insurance, I would have said the same thing, right? I would have said, you know, um, it, I didn't know the health, I probably wouldn't have even known health insurance agents existed because I always had employer health insurance. I would have just signed up and thought, oh, that's just what HR does. No, there's, there's someone else behind the scenes who's doing this stuff. 
Um, so even getting that idea out there to your clients is great. So at the end of the day, um, focusing on getting your name out there just as much as the carrier is important too. So there's two main ways that you can provide support to your prospects and current customers. Um, I feel like these are kind of obvious through phone calls, emails, and face-to-face -face appointments. Um, and then there's indirectly, you might support them through what you create, right? So via a blog, a video, or submitting articles and editorials to local publications. Um, and sometimes we hear that, that from agents that it's a lot of work for a brand new person or a brand new small group or to help them. Like they have too many questions and it's not worth it to me at the end of the day. Um, front loading all those answers onto your website can solve a lot of those problems. And honestly, um, and this is the thing that interests me the most about marketing, um, they having answers to those questions on deck is it works as kind of like a draw in and of itself, right? Because you have the first thing, at least I do as a millennial, when I have a question about something is I just, I type it into Google, right? So I'm just like, how, what, how should I get health insurance? And if you are answering those questions in your website and they're typing that in, you're going to get pop up in their search results, right? And if your website pops up in those search results and they're clicking around your website and you're answering their questions, they see you as an expert before they've even met you. And then they're going to come to you once they actually have a decision, want to make a purchase and they need your help, they're gonna to come to you, right? So while it does take a little bit of work at the front to write these questions and answers out, um, I think that the, it can make a world of difference for your um, agency because then someone who doesn't even know that a health insurance agent needs to help them is there um, answering their questions before they even knew that they had the questions, right? I think that's super interesting. Um, and that's kind of what Google is moving towards. Um, if you came to the summit, I talked a little bit about it. And if you go to my digital marketing webinar, I talk more about it. So what do consumers find difficult? Um, let's start by helping uh, consumers solve their problems. Um, that we identified in that slide before. So here are all, I'll just put them on the screen. Here they all are. So here are the most common problems that people have when they go through a um, insurance journey. So you get those all out um, and then you you pick one, just pick one. We're gonna pick this one. Okay, providing do required documentation. Then we're gonna list all the stuff that we can think of that has to do with providing those documentations. And we're gonna pick one of those things. Let's say QLE documentation. And we're going to say, I'm going to answer this question for my clients before they even come to me, before they speak to me, they're going to be able to come to my website and see that I know the answers to these questions and I can help them before they even know that's a question that they have. So I'm going to write these things. I'm going to write a blog. I'm going to write a video. I'm going to videotape myself talking about it and put it on social media. I'm going to take clips of that blog that I made. Um, turn them into social media posts, put those on my all my accounts. And then I'm going to put that final piece, that final uh, big article up on my website. And what that's going to do for you is the article is then working towards gathering search results that then drive to your website. That social media post is going to gather people who are following you in your agency and drive them back to your website. So long as you link that website on that social media post. That video is gathering from that social media platform, whether it be YouTube, TikTok, whatever. And then same thing, as long as you're driving them back to your original website, they're coming back there. And then the blog does what is called SEO, search engine optimization, where that it is pulling words from your blog that people are searching for or talking about. And the more that you find words that they are searching for or talking about, putting them into your blogs or articles, the more likely when those people Google those things that they that your website is going to come up. So again, these are all small things. Doing just one of these things one time is not going to solve your problem or be a great marketing strategy, I guess. But putting them all together and having them work within each other is going to is going to help and work. I, I've seen the data. I've seen the, the line graphs going up over time. 
Um, it doesn't happen overnight, but doing all these things together um, is a great way to get more, um, draw more business to your website and get leads that are warmer than just paying for a list somewhere. So then, as I said before, this would be an example of a, um, like an article that you could write. So it, look, it looks like this. And then see how there's all the sharing things on the side here. That would be how you would get those um, articles shared to your other social media platforms, right? And then once they're on those media platforms, the goal is to get them to leave those social media platforms and come to your website, right? So then that's how you would um, keep them stickier, more likely to stay with you and have you solve that problem for them. Uh, and then some of them also will do kind of like the um, pop-ups where they can then, then get information that way, or you could have them submit a form on their own. So then also, like I said before, um, revamping these um, articles into different social media forms, videos, uh, articles, and social media posts. And then again, the whole point is to drive them back to your website. So having these in three different social media um, platforms with the intent of coming back to you so that you can gather that submit form. So the overall key idea here is to just be productive and proactive about trying to gather um, leads using the internet, right? So the internet makes it easier to put these out everywhere for more people to see them. Um, I always would encourage you to um, double down if you're gonna mail something out, post it on social media too. If you're going to create a, um, a flyer that you're going to give out at a marketing event, throw it up on social media too. It doesn't take you that much time. It's not that much effort. You don't have to pay for it. Um, it's better than having nothing up there. So um, I'm going to take a quick sip of water before I get into my next topic, but I'd like you to think for a moment about what are some of the channels that you might use to reach and support your consumers that I have not talked about. One that I like um, that I did not mention yet and I wish I would have mentioned it earlier is making sure you're registered on Find Local Help or Help On Demand. Um, that's the website that if you go to, that if someone goes to searching, goes to the marketplace and tries to search for coverage um, and gets stuck and they want help, um, it will send uh, a message from them to the most local agent to them. And then another um, good aspect is if you speak another language or if you are able to support other um, languages other than, than English, if you put that into that account, it will prioritize you for someone who needs another language support system. So if you're specializing in like Korean and you um, want to help the Korean market, then you could say, hey, I speak Korean. And then anyone in the area um, who needs a Korean uh, translation service, um, even if you are farther away than another agent, it will prioritize you because you're going to be more helpful since you can speak their language. So make sure that you are on fine local help and that that information is up to date if you are interested in doing that. So then the marketplace circle of champions um, is something I'd like to talk about really quickly. Um, CMS has created this uh, annual recognition program for marketplace registered agents and brokers and recognizes agents and brokers who assist at least 20 active marketplace enrollments during open enrollment. Um, you do have to complete a current year marketplace registration and training requirements, have a valid NPN, and an approved active health-related line of authority in the states in which you are licensed to operate. So only the applications that are um, completed during open enrollment count for this circle of champions. So just keep that in mind. But who doesn't want to be a champion, right? So there is the circle of champions for 20 to 99 active enrollments. There's the elite circle of champions for those with 100 to 500 enrollments. And then the elite plus circle of champions for people with 500 and plus active enrollments. So what's in it for you? You can get a CMS appreciation letter that you can hang in your office to look really cool. You get a personalized certificate of recognition, which you also can hang in your office to look really cool. 
But these are the two that I like the most, um, the commemorative digital badge and the digital and social media toolkit. So only people who reach this circle can use these digital badges and these to have the access to this digital social media kit. So you are going to stand out in a good way because you are going to have a badge that came from a higher authority saying that you are great at your job and you're so great at your job that we are recognizing that you deserve some standout. And you'd have that badge on your um, email signature. I That's where we put our, we are, we have one that actually benefits for being a really awesome company. If you ever emailed any of us, you see it um, on our email signature, right? And the social media toolkit, um, we've gotten that from them as well. Really cool, really easy to use, highly recommend. So that's kind of what I already said. All right, so Circle of Champions is gonna impact your marketing outreach because you're going to have something that no other um, agents have unless they also have reached this and you're going to stand out as someone who has helped lots of people. Okay, so the advocate stage. This is the last portion of our show. This is also where we're gonna talk about some of those cross-selling opportunities that I mentioned earlier. So at this stage in the customer journey, this is your final stage. Your role is to support the customer in using their coverage and helping them perform maintenance changes and renewals, help them understand claims and explanation of benefits, and to answer any other questions they might have, like we talked about earlier. So providing excellent service means that we need to be in regular contact with our clients. 81% uh, of clients who leave an agent do so because they have a perceived lack of communication, and they feel like they're being ignored. Even if you're not ignoring them, um, it's really important to reach them where they're at, right? So if they're not an email person and you're um, emailing them all the time and they want to be called, well, they're going to say, well, they ignored me. They didn't, but they re you really didn't. You just didn't communicate. You didn't meet them at their level, right? Um, if you're dealing with maybe more of a millennial crowd, if you call them all the time, they're going to ignore the calls, but they might answer your text, right? Just making sure you're meeting them where they're at. Um, there is only a five to twenty percent probability of selling to a new selling something to a new prospect, but you are 70, 60 or seventy percent likely to sell something to an existing customer. So once you have someone in your clutches, don't just set it and forget it um, till the next OEP. Make sure that you're contacting them about other options and sell and selling other products like that hospital indemnity like that accident coverage, like that um, cancer policy, especially if it's something that runs in that person's family or if they are worried about it or if they have kids, great option to sell them that there. Um, so there are a few different ways, and we've talked about a bunch of these already, um, that you can contact your clients outside of just OEP. You can talk to them during their birthdays, anniversaries, and holidays. Like I said, I get a birthday card every year from my car leasing guy, um, you could do the same thing. It's really easy. You could even automate a lot of this. Um, have a card ready, generate something at the beginning of the month, send them out, boom, bam, done. Um, distribute educational content about other products. Um, great option as well, especially because a lot of the carriers we work with, at least like I know Wellaby, um, Life Secure, they have stuff that is already ready for, ready to go. You would just send that out and say, hey, you know, if you're someone who has this in their family, this would be a great option for you. Uh, give me a call if you're interested. And then broaching other topics in the conversation. Uh, because we're in the marketplace and we're not in Medicare, you do not need to mark anything on any scope of appointment. So I know if you're working in both space, the Medicare and the um, marketplace spaces, it might be stuck in your... And I even do this sometimes too. It's stuck in my head. I'm like, oh, I can only talk about you know, these certain products because I, um, because they're, I didn't have them check it on the scope. That's not a thing in the marketplace. So talk up, talk it up. Okay. So we talked about a bunch of effective ways to maintain contact with your customers between open enrollment periods. Um, I also love just, just going and doing some of those marketing events. We didn't talk a ton about that in this one today where there are um, two webinars I can think of, one that I think Randy did both of them actually, 
um, about how to host a great marketing event. Um, if you're interested in those, that is on Facebook as, or I'm sorry, on YouTube as well, the recording of that. And he's also putting on a meta ads one sometime in November. So if you remember anything about what I've said today from this particular winner, I would remember this customer journey. And then you're, because you're a good agent, because you're always thinking, you always want to uh, enhance your business. Um, you're going to, on your own, remember a lot of the things I said today. Um, and if you don't, you can just always watch the recording and remember. Um, or there's also all those webinars that go into more of the details of all of these different ways to contact your agents. I'm sorry, your clients as well. So that's about everything I have for you today. Let me check the chat to see if any I have any other questions. It looks like I am all good here. So um, unless there's anything else for me, thank you for spending time with me today.